What's up guys, Keegan here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be covering my essential productivity Mac settings and apps. I just got a brand new MacBook Air. I finally pulled the trigger. Whenever I get a new computer, I don't transfer anything over to it. That way I'm not starting with any cruff, fresh, out of the box machine. I install the essential apps that I need, set the settings the way I want them, and I'm off to the races. All of my files are in GitHub or Dropbox. I always love taking the opportunity with a new computer for a new fresh start. Let's get into it. Let's kick off with the settings. These are really the foundation of my productivity setup. So if we go into system preferences, the first thing I always set, and you can see it's already here, is I crank the track speed up all the way. I do this both on my Magic Mouse and the trackpad. So I think it comes installed with like, I think down here. I have to like, you scroll multiple times to get from one edge of the screen to the other. So I always crank this all the way up and it does take some time to get used to this mouse speed. But once you do, there's no turning back. So now with one flick of my finger, I can go from one end of the screen to the other. And this just speeds up everything else that you do. So I highly recommend this setting. I do the same thing for key repeat and delay until repeat for the keyboard settings. While you're banging out a script or writing ideas, taking notes, this will really speed up your note taking process. Every time you sit down on a computer that doesn't have these settings, it'll feel like you're moving through molasses. Oh dang, I got honey all over my legs. The next setting I always enable is in accessibility. If you go to spoken content, click speak selected. I also crank the voice up to here. So once you have this enabled, you can go to any text on your Mac, select it, and press option escape. Our thinnest, lightest notebook, completely transformed by the Apple M1 chip. Apple escape to cancel. So now you can have your Mac read to you any text. I use this all the time. I have my Mac read articles to me, emails, really effectively multitask, take in a ton of information and still get some work done. The last setting I recommend enabling if you have an Apple Watch is in security and privacy, general, you can turn on use your Apple Watch to unlock apps and your Mac. Whenever you come in close proximity to your Mac, it's gonna automatically unlock your Mac. You're right in, ready to go, instead of having to type in your password a thousand times a day. So that's it for the settings. Now let's dive into the essential apps that I always install. The first app I always install, this is my favorite to-do list app. I've tried almost all of them. What I love about Todoist is how you can nest tasks within projects and also within other tasks. I have on the sidebar a whole bunch of projects. I organize my to-do list long-term goals into these projects and then I organize what I wanna do in a given day. So today there is a D5 orientation video series I've been taking, getting up to speed about DeFi, NFTs, cryptocurrency, all of that. And then there's some work I wanna do on my habit tracking app, Carpe. I also wanna improve the toolbar on my journaling app, Diem. And then I'm keeping track of what I want to include in this video. This is in my YouTube project. In there, I have a section for video ideas. So we're already two layers deep and then essential Mac apps. I've broken up these tasks into settings and then wanting to cover software and then I have the steps I'm going to take to actually edit the video and get it uploaded to YouTube. Within settings I've covered everything that I wanted to cover already so I can just check all of those off. Within the software you can see everything that I'm going to talk about talking about Todoist right now so I can check that off and I can jump back and then in the video so this is everything I'm going to do to get this video finished and out to you guys. So that's Todoist, again, my favorite to-do list app. I've tried lots of them and I highly recommend this one. Next up is one of my own apps. Because this is an M1 MacBook, my iPhone, iPad apps just automatically work on the Mac. So if I launch Carpe, this is my habit tracking app. I use Todoist for all of my goals and projects. And then I use Carpe to track the things that I want to do every single day. On the weekend, I always pick my blue aprons for the week. So I've done that already. I can see other tasks I want to do, make sure I've got all my credit cards paid off, clean the bathroom, clean the kitchen. These are all tasks that are set up to occur every single 
single weekend so I can stay on top of all of these important items. Next up is another one of my apps called Diem. And again, this is an iPhone, iPad app that just runs on the M1 MacBook. So this is a journaling app that lets you journal about the day, can add a photo, took my MacBook to a coffee shop as things are opening up here in the US, finally able to get out and spend time in coffee shops. Can also scroll down and look back at past days. A couple days ago, we watched the season finale of Loki. I've journaled for 352 days in a row, and I can look back at a full calendar of every single one of my 1,275 journal entries. It's a great way to remember and look back at your life. Next up is Spark is my favorite email client because of the tools that it has for managing emails. I pretty much try to stay at inbox zero all the time. That's only possible through using the tools in Spark. A lot of times you get emails and you don't need to deal with them right away. So when I get an email during work hours that isn't related to work, I defer it until that evening. A lot of the newsletters that I get come out during the week but I don't need to read them right away, so I'll defer them until the weekend. Spark integrates with all the major email providers like Gmail, Microsoft, Yahoo, and gives you one interface and one unified inbox to manage all of them. So I got an email from the sleep tracking app Rise. Sleep debt is looking great, archive that. Then I got an email from Apple asking about the service yesterday from buying this MacBook. I'm recording this video right now, so I'm going to push this back until later today. And then I also got an email about Masterclass. Defer this until maybe next weekend. Now I'm at inbox zero, and that's Spark. Next up is my favorite note-taking app, Rome Research. A lot of people call this app a second brain. That's because it's a really powerful tool for writing things down and having it all connect together. You can view all of your notes in this graph overview. This is all of the notes I've taken and all of the interconnecting links between them. So you can see why people call this a second brain because it starts to form all of these connections like a brain does. These are some notes I took on how to pandemic proof your habits. I can even see other notes and articles I've read where I reference these back like this one around routines and the meaning of life. This is a very powerful tool for note taking and connecting your thoughts and finding connections between information that you've gathered. Next up is Spotify. This is my music app of choice. Have it on my Mac, iPhone, iPad. My favorite part of Spotify is their curation. I think they have the best curation out there. When I wanna get in the zone, I pick the type of music that I wanna listen to. I hit play and I know it's gonna be a string of great songs. Now we get into the creative side of my essential apps. The first one is Descript. It takes a very novel approach to video editing. When you import video, it transcribes the audio into text and then allows you to edit that text just like you would a Word doc, but then it edits that video as you edit the text. It's really a game changer when making videos just like this. When I saw Descript, that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to start this YouTube channel, knowing how much work it takes to edit video. But once I saw Descript, I was ready to jump in and get started. So if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel, I would highly recommend checking out Descript. You can see here on the left is all of the text for this video. I didn't have to type any of this in. This is all transcribed from the video I imported. I'm putting together the tech travel pouch video that I published a couple of weeks ago. And you can see I've added in titles. I've got my introduction dropped in here. I've got B-roll overlaid on top of what I'm saying. So it has all the video editing capabilities you need, but editing video like this is just so much easier in Descript as compared to Final Cut or Adobe Premiere. Next up, I do have Final Cut on this computer. I do still use Final Cut for more advanced video editing, doing speed ramps, stabilizing video, things like that. So I edit all of my B-roll in Final Cut and then export that and bring it into Descript. 
It's been a really great workflow. If you'd like to hear more about this, leave a comment down below. Next up is Figma. If you're not aware of Figma, it's definitely my design tool of choice for websites, apps. You can really use it for anything. I even use it for all of my YouTube thumbnails. In here, I have all of the design files for my apps. So if you look at Carpe or Diem on the App Store, these are the images you'll see for the promotional screenshots. Anything that you can think of, you can do in Figma. Next up, once I have my app idea designed, it's time to build it. And for that, I use Xcode, which is Apple's code editor specifically for iPhone, iPad, Mac apps. For my apps, I'm using an awesome new technology from Apple called Swift UI that makes designing and developing apps really easy and streamlined. I can edit them here on the left and get a live preview of exactly how this code is going to display. See that in light mode, dark mode, so that's Xcode. Another code editor I use for programming languages like Python, HTML, CSS is Atom. Here is the website code for my company, Gutra.com. Atom is my code editor of choice for anything that isn't an iPhone, iPad, or Mac app. Last up is a really unique calculator app called Numi. This allows you to do some really cool calculations, almost like a programming language. So if I have a price of $12.99, say, and I have 200 users, I can then see what is my profit of that price times the users. If I just need a quick calculation, I actually do that just right in Spotlight. But if I'm doing anything that's more sophisticated, like a series of steps or wanting to play with different numbers, it's really great in Numi to create these kind of variables and then be able to adjust those numbers and see what the outcomes could be. So that's a look at my essential Mac apps and settings. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know down below if you're gonna adopt any of these settings or Mac apps, or if you have other Mac apps that you think I should try out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button down below. It really helps this video get shown to more people. Well, that's all I got for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Peace.